So what am I saying here? I know I'm saying a thing that is difficult for many husbands. Please confirm to me if I'm making a big assumption. Do you find that the most difficult person to teach is your wife? Have you noticed that? How many of you succeeded in teaching your wife how to drive? <laughs> Very few. <laughs> I taught my wife, but I knew that it drew on something else. You see, to wash a wife by the word of God is different from being a preacher. Listen, how many of you preachers that are here, you have a quarrel at home? Or you raised a discussion that was not well finished? And then you all came to the church? Now, you are under an anointing. And it's not as if you are preaching your wife. Are you understanding? But suddenly as you are preaching, one of the issues that the Bible raised in your message happened to be something that you complained about in your wife before you left home. When you return, what happens? Man of God. Welcome. Oh. So we have become the... Is it the issue that we were talking in the room now that has become the message? Eh? Thank God. Oh. Thank you for preaching me. No, I didn't preach you. It was the anointing. Eh, anointing. <laughs> Anointed man of God. Mm. So do you know the trouble now? Even though you have an utterance to deal with a problem that is general to everybody. But because you've not washed that from your wife, you dare not preach it. Do you understand that now? You can't preach it. Because it will look as if you are taking a private matter to a public place. And forever you will explain. It's not you. I'm not, in fact, I didn't even know you are there. It's, uh, when you started all this preaching, everybody is looking at me. <laughs> I know it was me you went to discuss in that place. So you find that your utterance is cut short simply because you've not finished your homework. So you see, as a real husband, the first ministry is to wash by water of the word of God, your wife and yourself. And it has to be done not as a superior to the inferior. Not as a teacher, a lecturer to student. Not as a pastor to member. Do you know how to do it? Can I tell you how to do it? How do you wash your yash? When you go to the toilet, explain to me. How do you wash your yash? You stood like this. <laughs> Is that what you did? No. Even though it's a mess, you are still so tender. In cleaning yourself. Ah? Huh? Because it is yourself. If you were to help someone else clean his own yash, what will you do? When you are cleaning your own yash, do you do like this? No. But was he not smelling bad? Why didn't you close your nose? It was you. It was your yash. It was your own death. That's how to wash a wife. 
because you have not understood that that's the only way. You have not been able because you came as a critical man. And as you are doing that, your wife also looked for your loophole. You say, man of God, what of you? Am I the only problem in this place? We all have problems. Let's pray that God will help all of us. <laughs> so you will then discover that these two people who could not wash themselves, they now prefer to go and meet a pastor that doesn't know them. He can't walk out. You are going to cleanse her as though you are cleansing yourself. You are washing her wound as though this is my wound. When you are speaking about it, you know it is not good, but you are like, you come in as if you are enjoying it. So that it can be cleansed. I tell you, every wife will change. They will be sanctified. When they find a loving hand helping to sort out the wrong things in their character. When they notice that we are removing these issues from our lives, not just from you, it's me. She said, oh, may God help us. So when you need them to pray, your prayer is not that, God, help my wife, she has problem. Lord, my wife has problem. Oh, the devil is troubling her. If your wife listens to that kind of prayer, when you stand up from that prayer, say, well, since we have, I have problem. I have problem and I don't want to keep giving you problem. Just go, since I have problem. Man of God, will you pray with somebody that has problem? Make your prayer so that you can move on. When God solves my own problem, I also find my way. That's a reaction. All because she did not see acceptance, she did not see love, she did not see oneness, she did not see commitment. So you see, the ministry to a wife is different from the ministry to a congregation. The way we read the Bible and we study the Bible with a wife, we are not being, we are not compromising the truth, but we minister the truth tempered in the love of the heart. And I tell you, if ministry on the pulpit could be done like that, we'll get greater results. I know that many of you that have been benefited and your life wants to change is when you meet a man who genuinely shows interest in you. Eh? Who says, I know you are struggling but this thing is not correct but I want to stand with you until we can get through it. Your heart relaxes. But it becomes much more for a man and his wife that those issues you are still watching before God does not become the matter of rejection between the two of you. If we are going to be really husbands, which God needs for us to manifest His glory on the face of the earth as He's been talking to us, we need to deliberately undertake this labor. I say it's a labor. And how can, what are the suggestions I have for that? Two suggestions. The first, do you know that this is a wrong thing? Whenever you take the position of the accuser of the brethren, what is the accuser of the brethren? Always pointing the finger. Always pointing the finger. No. Come around that 
problem and identify with it. Stand around it together knowing that as long as it is there, it's my problem. Learn to use words like us, we, both of us. Are you wearing me? Don't say, uh, Shadow, when are you going to be serious with this, your problem? When are you going to be serious with this, your problem? If the trumpet fans now, are you sure you will go to heaven? Me, I told you, your marriage is only in this world. That is like shooting an arrow on an open road. You see, she can tolerate that from a pastor. In fact, she will say, ah, the Holy Spirit told him about my problem. But for you, it will take a different anointing for your wife to know that what you are saying is a revelation of the Holy Spirit. Because she feels that it's because you know that's why you are talking. So you see, for a man to stand on the pulpit and preach and his wife will be blessed, it means that he has already been washing her at home. And that's the biggest problem that many of us have had as husbands. Our wives, they will sit down cool before even a primary six drop out to teach. And they will say, Amen, Amen, Amen. But when you raise up your hand and say, I want to say something. Suddenly your wife's attitude changes. Say, what can you say? What do you want to say? What do you say? So, when you say, this passage is this, he says, uh, but that passage also meant this one and that one and that one. You know what she's doing now? She's looking for an area of your own life that that passage should also hit so that you will, you will not go away as a champion. Do you understand that now? So you find that this is the reason why husbands and wives most of the time can study the Bible together and be blessed. And unless that is corrected, we can go. And do you know that even though I'm encouraging family altar with all the children, family altar with the children doesn't minister to the wife. Doesn't minister too much even to you because you are overconscious that you are guiding the children. There is no family altar when the discussion reaches me and you and say, okay, uh, okay, mommy, what of yourself? Can you do that while the children are around? So, you know, your family altar generally is an hypocrisy. As far as you and your, your wife are concerned, why the children are there, you have to smile and say, okay, let us pray. Let's pray for the children. Let's pray for the whole world. Let's pray. <laughs> so you'll be praying everywhere. And here is your wife that is breathing in as a man. So what do I suggest? The worship must be private washing. Private washing. I'm telling you the truth. There is no woman that will not allow you to wash if the door is locked. Am I right? But if the door is open and people are coming and going, say, so you want to expose me? Let's wash you also too. You want to make you the devil in the in the in the in the fellowship? Eh? But if it is behind locked doors, and she knows that I can be open, I can be naked here. My husband is my confidant. Whatever I showed him, 
you won't go and expose me anyhow. When a woman grows in confidence like that with a man, everything changes. But you see, you must build it. It has to be built. It doesn't happen by chance. It must be built. Hallelujah. So, I want to request that in order to provide for that, there are three things I'm, I'm proposing. You are free to look at it. If you want to adopt it, it, it might be of help to you. Now, my first proposition is that you can look for a starter. What do I call a starter? There is he, someone, who your husband respects and who you also respect. And when he preaches or he teaches, there's no doubt in your mind that you're speaking from God. Do you understand it? The two of you go to such a place. You know what you are doing? While you are standing together, you are also worshiping. Or you get a message that is very, very effective. Slot it in between you and your wife in your bedroom and say, let's listen to this thing together. And as you are listening, something God does to a man is that he gives you a faster insight. Some of you have just converted your wife may have been saved for 10 years. But the truth is that two years after you are converted, God causes you to know more than the 10 years of your wife's knowledge. The reason is because he wants you to be the head. So, when you sit down together and you are listening, you are taking note. She's taking note. When the message touched the two of you, you will find your wife, you will say, pray for me. Do you understand? Pray for me. She's beginning to give you leadership. Next time, you may not even need to bring a tape. You may now open scriptures directly with yourselves. And she now defers to you and says, Since God has helped you to know this more than me, tell me what God wants us to do here. You are beginning. You can start with a starter. Is that alright? But a starter must not be the end. You must grow to a point where you can grab the word of God and apply it to one another. You are washing. And you are progressively presenting her before the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, the last tip along this line. Excuse me, brother. Don't, don't allow your wife to eat something that you have not tasted. If you feel that your wife is interested in a, 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 a ministry or a minister, they'll say, if you like, go. Mm -mm. What should you do? Lead her there. Sit down there together. Things that will excite a woman and she will be falling almost for a false doctrine. When you are there, you are listening. It's when you are going back home. You say, ah, that's a very powerful message. Hey, that man can preach. But then you knew that that was just emotion. That there's nothing much in that message. You know, you know what you want to do? You want to win her from a wrong place. Eh? So when you have gone with her, you not take that thing. Without looking antagonistic, you now begin to analyze the chaff that have been sugar-coated. Then you ask, eh? What? 
Is it like that? He said, but can you check what the Bible says here and here and here? Say, hey, it's true. You have already delivered your wife. Do you understand? But when you say, no! If I see you go there, then you better go and meet him there. You will lose your wife. Because you give her an impression that there is something there that you did not like. That's why you are just jealous. <clears throat> you can protect her. And by the time you're doing that, you are building a solid relationship as a husband and as a father. The same thing you do with your children. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I will leave you to conclude other things. I would like you to pray because the growth, the perfection of your wife is actually to you that he might present it to himself. Did you see that? Verse 27, that he might present it to himself. A glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any sort of thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. I want to say to you, sir. Can I say something to you? The head of every man is Christ. Is that so? The head of the woman is the man. And that man ought not to cover his own head because he reflects the glory of God and the image of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. Friend, what I don't know whether you know is this. The woman is the glory of the man. If your wife begins to manifest the grace of God, let me start with the, the most trivial. Whose name goes everywhere? Eh? It's your name. So, sometimes as I'm going, I get to some places where they will not have given me attention. They say, that's doctor's husband. Ah, oh, oh, thank you for lending us doctor. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's because of you that we have doctor here. Ah, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I get a lot of respect. <laughs> Apart from what God gives me as a person, all the glory that my wife acquires, How can I, the husband, the head of doctor, be working in the hospital where the doctor is the doctor and nurses will not respect me? Is it possible? It's not. All her glory is added to me. Now, why am I telling you that? So when you have passion for the perfection of your wife, you are not you are not investing outside you are investing in yourself do you know that if any of your wives happen to be made commissioner now in government is there a problem do you know that that one is even better than for you to be the commissioner do you know why all the government business, you are the brain who is deciding it. Did you hear me? You are the brain. When they discuss anything in the council, one thing about your wife is that, and I thank God for women, if you are not able to go for a seminar, Send your wife. 
you will get at least 90% of what happens. But when a man goes for a meeting, now, I'm, I know what you will do now. When you get home now, your wife will say, how was the meeting? Oh, fine. Praise God. The meeting was good. You know, I say, what happened? A meeting of five days that we sat for 10, 12 hours. Let me ask you, how long will you report it? Five minutes. The reason is because your mind doesn't carry details. If it was your wife, she would say, when we got there, I don't know the name of the first man that welcomed us, but oh, he's a nice man. He spoke very well. In fact, he said this, he said, your wife will report including the dress I was wearing. <laughs> Have you noted that? Yes. How I wish, husbands, you will know that it is to your greatest advantage if your wife is the one that is perfected. She brings you more glory. It makes your blessing double. When you appoint a woman as a commissioner for something, unfortunately, you have appointed her husband. In fact, you have appointed two people. Am I right? If you want to send her somewhere, you are ready to buy two tickets. Because all she needs to say is that, you know, I won't know my way I need to go with my husband. That's all right. But when they appoint you as a commissioner, you do not have a right. If you are saying, I want my wife to come along, you say, yeah, plan for that from your private post because this is not a matter of couple's trip. <laughs> How I wish you know, I'm seeing Jesus. Why is Jesus wanting to release gift and power that it is the body of Christ that we manifest? It's because he brings greater glory. I really wish you will understand how to be a real, a real husband. A real husband is not the one that is stingy and cringing upon the wife. Allow your wife she will carry your name everywhere. When they are announcing her on the radio, it was your name they are announcing. It's your family that everybody is talking about. When she dies, it's your family they will hand her over to. No problem. I see the perfect husband in Christ. And I see him saying, Come, let me show you what ought to be done. As we draw curtain over this. Be passionate about her perfection. He said, nourish and cherish it. Did you read that in that scripture? He said, to nourish. To nourish is mean to deliberately feed. To deliberately bring her up. So that all her graces can manifest, can manifest, can manifest. Yes, sir. When her glory breaks forth, it will be poured to you. It's yours. If a woman is any a million naira a month, or a million dollars per week. You have no problem about that. Do you have a problem about that? Can I tell you why? The joy of a woman. 
when she cooks. Have you ever seen a woman that cooks and is happy to eat it alone? Do you know that food is not sweet in the mouth of a woman until she hears the husband say, oh, this is nice. That's how God made them. Why are you afraid to invest in her growth? Why are you afraid to invest in her development? When you invest in your wife, you invest in yourself. He said, whosoever loves his wife, what has he done? He has only loved himself. Have loved yourself. Brother Degu, all those places where your wife goes to cover events, tell us practically, sir. Do you benefit at all? What does it add to your business? Tell us. Many times when the invitation comes, because we run a big catering uh, organization, and she's invited to come and cater, maybe in palaces or for governors and uh, big occasions like that, the first thing is that I am invited to such occasions to as a special VIP. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that now? <laughs> then as we get in there and she's busy operating and um, they ask one or two questions and she introduces me. I find a lot of people now coming around to see as if I'm the person really behind everything that is happening there. You are, sir. And as a very humble person, I don't dispute. <laughs> as a humble person, <laughs> you don't dispute. <laughs> So actually, as I see the business progress, as we do things around, I mean, I stand by and uh, the glory, I mean, people come and they call glory land, glory land. And even though she's the main operator of glory land, it's me, people are calling glory land all around town. You see that? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I only wanted you to be understanding that we are practical. Will you please... From today, take a deliberate decision. I will be the husband. I will release her. I will enlarge her. I will labor for her perfection. I will pray for her to become presentable to me. I found that Jesus... Is laboring on us so that we will be presentable to him. And as our lives begin to shine, the glory does not go to us. It goes to him. That's what happens when any woman who is properly married and who has a husband is breaking forth. Their break forth is not your threat. So when they say, yes, women, eh, keep quiet. Women will keep quiet for their husband to take the lead. But once the husband is in charge, the husband say, now I have allowed her to speak. They know that everything she say is out of your fullness. No rational man thinking will see you standing there and will not recognize that this is the man that makes this woman able to do what he's doing. Even if it is just that you married a doctor for the community. Is that not enough? And if you had gone to marry a, a, sewing, a sewing mistress, what would the community get? So that's why when they are going up and they say, ah, sometime I'm sitting in the house and they are rushing in. And I say, yes, we want to see doctor. Some people thought I was the doctor. <laughs> so I said, eh, can you please attend to them? They say, oh, thank you, sir. 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 I don't know anything. 
But all she knows has been what? Added unto me. It's mine. And I'm telling you, when you understand this, you will hear your wife also say, I am yours. All about me is yours. All that I have is yours. I don't want to have a private account. I only want you to know that I belong to you. They don't enjoy keeping something private. It's only when they are not sure again. When they see another woman struggling with you. When they see that you are moving zigzag, they say, ah, let me be careful. I don't know where I stand in this man's life. That's what causes the problem. Will you be pa passionate for her perfection? Now, please read that passion, I mean, that section of our discussion. It is explanatory enough. And I've talked that you should please nourish her. Nourish her soul. Amen. Nourish her spirit. Nourish her body. Three-dimensional nourishing. The spirit. With the word of God. In the place of prayer. Have a correct fellowship. Don't have two different churches you are going. Is that alright? Don't say you go there, me, I'm going here. No. Don't let church divide you. I am against those pastors that appoint a man's wife and make her pastor and post that to another place when her husband is somewhere else. If you are a reasonable woman but they are not here, she will have simply said, no, sir. Ministry does not come before my marriage. Don't allow division. Praise the Lord. Now, nourish her soul. How, does he, how can you nourish somebody's soul? Our soul is the seat of our emotion. It's the seat of our feeling. And it's the seat of our mind. Now, a woman's mind is too delicate and it needed to be nurtured. It needed to be managed very well. Her emotions must not be destroyed. Let's create room where their emotions, the, you know the emotions of a woman is what makes them soft. It's what makes them feeling. It's what makes them release. Each time you shout a woman down, you know what you have done? You shatter her emotion. Each time you say, get away from here! Something scatters inside her. It may take days. That's why you say, what touches women, what kills women, is words. And that's what also destroys women. Words. If you see your daughter that is falling into a wrong hand, I may tell you the magic word. What is the magic word? I love you. When any careless man comes to a girl and says, I love you. The girl's head is turning, turning, turning as if something big has been said. Words means a lot. So words must be used very, very deliberately and carefully. But you know the problem? Men, 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 we, our expression is generally strong, straight. There's no cut and join there. Straight. So you know sometimes you have, you have not spoken for one week. The, the time you open your mouth like this, the concentrated sentence that you bring out, it could make a woman run mad. So that's why if you listen to your wife, what she's bothered about is not the wrong thing that she did, but the word you said. Have you noticed that now? You've noticed that there's a big matter, but that's not the issue for the woman. Say, but why did you say this? And you told me that uh, if I want to be a halot, let me be a halot. 
You say, but I, I didn't mean it, but you said it. No, 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 that's not what I wanted to say. Say, but that's what you said. I mean, oh Lord. And she will weep for the next three days because you spoke a word. Men, will you learn right words? Let every word that comes out of your mouth minister grace. Don't say anything that is not sorted with grace. Words is important in your marriage because it is the nourisher of your wife's soul or is a destroyer of it. So in order to nourish our soul, we must create times of discussion, times of communication, times of sharing and speaking soft words. Soft words but true words. If it is true, but yet spoken in love is great. We must nourish her soul. We must, we must invest in her mind. I want you to be doing things to train your wife's mind to be able to concentrate. Well, thank God for some of us that have wives that have gone to school. They studied courses that train their mind. Some of us don't have that privilege, but we can train them. We can help our wives to begin to think logically by giving them little, little activities to do. And you are saying, can you please report to me how this went? When you are doing that, you are helping her to become chronological in her thinking. And when a woman begins to think with you chronologically, your decision making becomes easy. What makes problem in family when you want to decide a matter is that you are raising an issue, you are raising, this is a serious issue you are raising. Then something jumped from the blues on your wife's mind. He said, I even remember uh, Mrs. Stehemba. Uh, 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 in fact, the way, that, that kind of dress. You know, to a man, to a husband, it's 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 abnormal. It's absurd. Say, so, what's the connection between Mrs. Tehemba and what we are saying here, for God's sake? But you see, until you resolve Mrs. Tehemba's clothes, you won't get her attention again. No. Do you understand that now? But if you start training her mind to learn how to push away interruptions and to focus on things that are real your decision-making process becomes beautiful. It doesn't happen without training. And God is depending on you as the husband to do that. What you have done is when you find that your wife is so scattered, you know what you say? Forget about it. Forget about it. It's all right. It's all right. You close the chapter. You decided what you want to do. And then you only came back home with the result. You say, say ah, but we didn't discuss it. Say, well, uh, I thought that it was a waste of time trying to talk with you over that. Thing, so I've done it. The reason is because genuinely, 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 sometimes women are difficult to carry along. Because their mind is, you are talking serious things here now. Something she just remembers, hey, I've not bought the pint. I've not bought pint for my baby. That is enough to stop a big discussion. She will dash out quickly. If she doesn't dash out physically, she has dashed out in her mind. By the time she's contributing, she's not coherent. So many of us, our option is to leave them out. And do things alone. No. It's not good to be alone. That little detail that your wife will remember is going to make your decisions wholesome. So let's invest in her mind. Will you please invest in her body? For your wife to be presentable to you, you need to invest in her body. The 
there is no man that does not like a beautiful woman. Am I right? You like a woman that is cute. Eh? When you are coming out and your wife under skirt is showing under and she's walking like this and everything is scattered. <laughs> Do you like that? You don't. You don't. Tell the truth. We are Christians. We are spiritual men. But we don't like it. Isn't it? You like something that is looking good. But to have a cute wife. It's not money yet. It is just an issue of nourishing. You see, when you help a woman to organize her thought. To organize her spirit is not a problem to organize her little wardrobe. Her wardrobe may not be big, but whatever she has is good. And it's our duty to nourish them so that they can become cherishable. And I want to begin by saying, nourish her appetite. Don't let your wife be eating junks out of exhaustion. Don't let your wife become bloated to the point that she's losing shape. She's doing potter, 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 and you yourself. And then unconsciously, there's another girl in the office that whose, whose professional training is on appearance. She's coming and saying, Why can't sir? Everything is neat. Everything is arranged. You won't know when your eyes is looking twice. You can avoid that. Invest in nourishing her body. What you eat together, let it be healthy. It doesn't take... In fact, I found that healthy food had the cheapest. That's what I found. I found that to eat and be a healthy man is the cheapest. If you had more money, you will eat more junks. Praise the Lord. Now, while you are investing in her body, man, let me tell you, the woman's body is different from the man's body. In its makeup. The hormones that are working in a woman's body to produce several things which is not needed in our own body are more dormant in our own body. In theirs, very active. So you see that a woman needs an extra toilet materials. It's not a luxury. That a woman needs something for her armpit is not a luxury. It is because whereas me and you can sweat and there may be no problem. When she does, it comes with some more odor that have been secreted by some other hormones that needed to be dealt with. Don't let me hear say, what are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? I gave you something the other time. What are you, 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 you need something again? Make allowance. Don't strangulate her in those necessary essentials. Her toiletries are very important. Very important. And men, we generally forget that. Whereas a man, you can wear your own underwear for three, four days without washing it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I, I don't want to say that again, have you? But for her... It is a discomfort. 
She's not just being neat neat. It's a discomfort. So she needs provision. So will you make provision to nourish her body? To give her what can make her a woman? A woman is made to be soft. Don't let your wife begin to grow be a beard. I hope you know that it is it is very strange when you see a woman with be a beard and she's needing a razor. But what causes that? Stress. Stress. When a woman is exposed to manly work, the hormones that make man man will begin to develop. And the hormones that make man I mean, a woman will begin to recede. You will suddenly see that her breast is reducing. But then her muscles is expanding. <laughs> you will suddenly discover that her body air is growing. And her softness is dying out. Do you want to marry a man? You need to nourish so that she can be cherishable. I'm not saying that I approve women that will put a, an array of perfumes everywhere and they are spending two hours to use this to touch that one, to touch that one. No, I'm not talking of such cosmetic women. And they do so because there's an emptiness in their own life. But I'm talking of a virtuous woman that is presentable. Shemfe said, when you see her, you see humility, you see gentleness, you see obedience, you see submission, and yet you see beauty. Will you please invest in that? Those other girls that are attracting some of you outside, do you know that most of the money they collect from you, since they have no responsibility for children, that's what they use it for. That's what they use it for. Make your wife presentable. Keep her rosy. After 25 years of marriage, let her look like the young girl that you are just courting. When they invite you to go to any occasion, let her be the one that you can walk side by side with. Don't make her mama yard. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Finally, be the husband. What did I say? Be the husband. Let's spell husband for me. H-U-S-B-A-N-D. Husband. And it comes from husbandry. Prof, will you please, from your agricultural experience, no, 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 uh, Prof, Ogunkule will be able to help us what is the simple layman's definition of husbandry, sir? Don't go into the etymology and all of that. <laughs> well, it simply means caring. Caring. Nursing. Nursing. And uh, managing. Managing. What makes a wild animal a household pet, sir? Temi. Temi. Husbandry. That's all. Be a husband. The word husband met a nurse. Is that all right? The husbandman is a nurse. 
What is he again? Management. He's a manager. So he manages. He cares. Cares. And he tames. And tames. He tames not by threatening. <laughs> How does he tame an animal, sir? By befriending. By befriending. When, when the animal, you get an animal and you tame the animal, you feed the animal. You feed the animal. And you show love. You show love. When the, the animal. animal sees you next time, he will not run away. <laughs> Amen. So I ask you, be the husband man. But there is another word that looks like husband. H-O-R-S-E-B-A-N-D. What is it? Husband. You know that when you have the husband, it's giri 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 guru 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 guru. They want to exercise power. We don't need husband. Husband is only for war, and your marriage is not a battlefield. It's not on the, you are not on the battlefront. If you see your wife, every time you go and say, yes, 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 yes. it is only an indication that she saw what? An enemy. But if a dog Backs at you. <laughs> and you came in and approach it. And you stretch your hand. And you tap that is flat head. And you brought food. It's suspicious. Does he want to capture me? And then you release it. It went. Then you throw food again. Next time when you are coming. It will just come. And do like this and do like this. And be robbing you. And if anybody wants to attack you, he will not go and face that person and begin to back that one. Oh, be the husband man, not the husband. May God help us. Let's pray together here. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I want us to now pray together. Let's pray. This has been Living Seed. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703-036369, 0703-768118. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org. Or visit our website at www.livingseed.org.